Welcome to lesson five where we're going to talk about technical analysis. This is going to be a really big topic to dive into. I'm going to break it down in sections. We're going to talk about market structure, price action, candlestick patterns and chart patterns, and also technical indicators as well. So without further ado, let's just jump right in. Welcome to lesson five on technical analysis. We're going to talk about market structure, candlestick patterns, chart patterns, and technical indicators. This is one of the most important lessons, and it's going to be a very long lesson, I would say. Break, I'm going to break it up into a few sections, as mentioned here, um, but let's dive in. Besides, besides capital defense management and trading psychology, this is the third most important course you're going to, uh, lesson you're going to have to pay attention to and study, because this is how we find our entries, exits, and profit targets, and give ourselves an edge in the market. So first... What is technical analysis? The way I like to describe it is I placed it here on, on the slide here. And technical analysis catalogs market data and establishes a system for finding trade ideas, picking entries and exits, and managing risk. So we take everything we know about technical analysis, candlestick patterns, market structure, price action, technical indicators, all that stuff, and we combine everything into a system in our that is developed into our trading plan that we follow day in and day out that gives us when we should get into a trade, where we should put our stops, and when we should take profit. That in a nutshell is technical analysis. And technical analysis, also known as TA, um, it gives ourselves an edge by being able to allow us to time the market. So, um, so we're not just entering at random times uh, random levels, middle of the freeway, as I like to say. Um, we actually have good probability setups based on technical analysis that we can take to give ourselves an edge. And it's important to know that technical analysis works most of the time, all the time, so focus on a probability mindset. In other words, it doesn't always work, but there's a high probability of it working, but know that if you keep following the same trading plan that you back-tested and you know that over the long term, your strategy and plan, trading plan is going to make you money. That's okay if you lose every now and then, because in the long run, you'll make money. Most common tools for technical, technical analysis that we use are market structure and price action. This is in the order of importance, so I definitely would say market structure, also known as price action, is the most important technical analysis tool you can, you can understand. And we'll dive into more detail on what that means. After that, candlestick and chart patterns along with volume, trend lines, Fibonacci retracements, average true range, also known as ATR, moving averages, and lastly, RSI and TTM squeeze, also known as the John Carter squeeze. So what is market structure? Market structure is fractal. And if you don't know what fractal means, Essentially, no matter what time frame or what chart you're looking at, whether it be the weekly, the daily, the one minute, the tick chart, the five minute, the hourly, doesn't matter. The same type of patterns will occur on all those time frames, but just in, just in smaller increments, I would say. So for example, if you're on the daily or the weekly time frame and you see some kind of reversal pattern forming, the move is going to be obviously bigger. So the risk is going to be bigger because you're going to need a wider stop. But the same type of pattern happens on, can happen on the one minute chart. You can see a double bottom. You can see um, like a double top. You can see uh, like doji candle reversals on all these time frames, And they all repeat themselves no matter what time frame you're looking at. Um, that's why it's always important to, we're going to talk about this, is to look at the bigger picture, then narrow down on the, small, the shorter time frames for day trading to figure out what's the best levels to trade for us. So market structure is simply support and resistance and the trend on your charts. So let's take a look at the three types of market structure we could have. We could have bullish market structure, which is higher highs and higher lows, and we wanna buy the dip in this case. Bearish market structure is what we're currently in in the market after the sell-off at the all-time high due to the coronavirus and we're making lower lows and lower highs and we want to sell every rip that comes in if you don't know what sell the rip means it means every time we have a move up you want to look to short that and for a continuation down a neutral market structure 
is more or less indecision. You have equal highs and equal lows. And the simple strategy for that is you just buy the bottom and sell the top and you take profit um, on the other side of that. Every trend has three phases and every trend cycle is made up of three smaller inner cycles. This is super important to understand how you can position yourself in day trading and swing trading, investing, so you can get a good entry, uh, follow momentum, stuff like that. So the first, first one is the continuation move. It's also called public participation. You'll have, a, I'm gonna just use this as a bullish example. So you can obviously flip this over on its head for the bearish example. So continuation move, you'll have a push up and then you'll have a corrective move, which is also called a pullback or a tracement. And this, if you miss the continuation move, you wanna wait for a corrective move to enter. And when do we enter? We wait for the consolidation. It's also called chopper range, where price is rotating on a previous structure top, where it's holding a support and we wanna enter there with the expectation that we're gonna have a continuation higher. So the next leg up and then the same same type of cycle will happen again on the first continuation moves high. We'll come back and retest that and we'll look to buy that again uh, during the consolidation for another continuation up. So market structure can be seen uh, as macro and micro market structure. Like I already kind of mentioned, for macro market structure, we focus on the longer time frames. Mainly like from the monthly, weekly, and daily, you can even consider longer uh, macro market structure to be on the hourly and four hour. And like I mentioned, it's the bigger picture. What is the overall trend of the market on the long term and intermediate term? Because that, that will help us figure out where the best day trade levels will be. And the micro market structure, we take what we find on the, ma the macro market structure and we overlay that on the micro market structure using shorter time frames like the five minute, the 15 minute, 30 minute, and even the 512 tick or any type of tick chart that you would like to use. And like I mentioned, you use this mac macro structure to find the best day trading setups where you'll have a substantial reward for the risk you're gonna take. So structured trading guide, this is pretty handy, I would say. Um, let's, so let's say the trend is bullish and also known as being in an uptrend. Phase one, or at least we have three phases like we already talked about. We have continuation, pullback, and consolidation. And this table is gonna show you pretty much what should be your trade um, in the bullish trend and, what, and also the phase that we're in. So continuation is running profits. If you're in the trade, hold on to it and move your stop up appropriately as the trade's working in your favor. When you see a pullback, when, the up, when you're in an uptrend or it's bullish, the price action, it's a long opportunity. So you have to wait for that pullback if you miss a continuation. Um, and then there's also a consolidation. Once we have that pullback, we'll consolidate a little bit. And you want to go long at the range lows for a potential continuation up where you're pro you'll be running profits again and getting paid. Now let's take a look at the bearish structure trading guide, or also known as being in a downtrend. The continuation in this case is also the same running profits and the pullback in this case will be a move up and that will present a short opportunity or retesting previous support now resistance and we'll usually consolidate there and we want a short on the range highs when we're consolidating with a stop above for a continuation lower to, to run our profits and, and, and get paid. So let's talk about time charts versus tick charts when day trading. And this is my personal preference and how I use them. I think Kristen probably does the same. And so for time charts, it, every candlestick that you see on the right here is based solely on an arbitrary amount of time. So this one's the five minute, I believe. So no matter what's happening in the market, we every 300 seconds, a candle will form. And I think it's great. Um, but it doesn't give you the full picture of like the nitty gritty details of the market structure and what traders are doing, uh, especially in the volatile market that we're in right now. If you're using time charts and you see, you'll see like a five minute chart have over a hundred point range on the NASDAQ. How do you figure out how to get in when, when the move is that big on a time chart? You, you have to use the tick chart and I'll show you why. 
And I usually use the time chart to see the bigger profit targets and it's just easier because it's more pulled back than the tick chart. So tick charts is ba are based on the number of trades taken. So for example, what that means is say I go to enter three contracts long, that counts as one tick. Say someone buys 10 contracts, that counts as one tick as well. So each order that gets executed until we hit this, say we're using the 512 tick, will be one bar. So it, it shows you more information on what the bigger money, the smarter money is doing, either buying or selling, and which way the trend's going. And you can see the market structure a lot clearer uh, as you can see on the, if you look at the five minute chart on the top right and then the tick chart on the bottom right, you can see the nitty gritty details of where the structure highs and the structure lows are. So you can kind of position yourself and see when the trend shifted, when you could enter, um, kind of gives you a better, gives you a better idea of where you can enter the trade and where your stop should be. Whereas if you look at the time chart, your risk might be bigger because you're not seeing these fine details. And tick charts compress low activity periods. So if we're just chopping around, we can see the market structure better, but it really shines, tick charts really shine during volatility when, when that's spiking. And as I mentioned, tick charts are used for identifying your entry and your exit. So let's take a look at an example of bullish market structure. I'm using Baidu here. And if you don't know what Baidu is, it's just a Chinese stock. It's like the Google of China. And you can see here that I have the, the 233 tick chart on the left and I have a daily chart for the bigger levels on the right. I draw out the levels here. Yesterday's high is resistance. If you look at red candle, the red doji on the right hand side, that would be resistance. And yesterday's close is also support, which is the green line here. So using this information, we can assume if we hold yesterday's close as support, then that's one potential long opportunity. But the better long opportunity is if we break above yesterday's high, which is resistance and becomes support, the break above is bullish. And now we look for a long opportunity on the retest. We don't want to chase that and get in while the, mar while the price is moving if we missed it from the original entry. We want to be patient and let it come back and retest where it was previously rejecting. So what we do is we put an entry at the yesterday's high, which is now support. And we put a stop below the consolidation before we broke out of that level. And then we have a target back to the high of the day. And you can see how that trade worked beautifully. You managed your risk. You waited for the trade to come back and retest for the pullback long opportunity. And then you entered with your stop below where the previous consolidation was on the push up, and you actually could have put your stop even a little bit lower or higher, I would say, where we actually U turn when we right after we got into the trade. So this trade ended up being like two to three or even four hour. So worth the risk. Examples of bearish market structure this is the NASDAQ 512 tick on the left, and we have the daily chart on the right hand side. Yesterday's high and close are support. You can see them by the green lines on the left-hand side. And notice how price can't get above here. We more or less tried three times, but we couldn't clear the previous highs to the left after we broke support. And that was look, it's looking like a short opportunity right now, especially if we use, uh, if we lose yesterday's high, which is the middle green line. So once the lower high was confirmed from the, the high of 90.55.5, price breaks support, and we want to look for a retest right there. Once the lower low was confirmed, we take the entry on the push up. Once we break support, we're going to have a retracement that we're going to look for to get in short. We don't enter on the first pullback. We wait for it to fail and then make a lower, a lower high, then enter with a stop above the previous high for a target much lower. Some examples of neutral market structure using the same exact chart on NQ. So as I mentioned, price can't get above that red line and we have yesterday's high and close as support. And you can see within this about an hour's worth of time, price is rotating in a range. You have equal highs and equal lows more or less. So the trading plan in this case would be to sell the top with a stop above, 
with a target to the other side of the consolidation at support. Or if you want to go long, you can buy the bottom with a stop below where those the equal lows were with the target back to the top of this rectangle. Next up is a very powerful concept talking about price and volume relationship. Now, a combination of price and volume can really tell you a powerful story to get you on the right side of the market. Because when you have a lot of volume and you're seeing price action do a certain thing, and you understand candlestick patterns and chart patterns, you'll be able to take advantage of this and jump on the jump on the the side that the smart money is on and ride in a position that will pay you nicely. In this case, let's take a look at the market open here. So this is 6.30 because I'm on San Diego. So the market opens at 6.30 a.m. We have a huge increase in volume at market open, but it holds support. You don't want to go long unless you're a little bit of a risk taker, but typically you don't want to go be trading in the first 15 minutes. So you'll see that the second five minute candle, so 10 minutes after the market opened, we bounced a little bit, but we couldn't clear pretty much the open of uh, the market so far. So we sell off at market open on weak volume and then make a higher low on higher volume, signaling an entry. Next up, we see that price breaks the resistance or the open of the market on steady volume and holds on correct to move at now support for continuation. So all we did, the long opportunity here was to buy the retest once we broke above the resistance that we previously couldn't get above, which was the market open. And then you'll see the exit signal comes in on a volume spike at resistance, which also aligns with the pre-market high if you see to the left. Just we went a little bit above the pre-market high, but we formed a more or less an inverted hammer with on an increased volume, which was signaling to exit and take your profit. Now let's take a look at the same scenario, but from a bearish perspective. As I mentioned, when we were originally long on the break of the US market open, on the retest we would enter and we would take profit once that first inverted green hammer with more volume came in, we would take profit there. But say if we weren't long, we were looking for a short around the pre-market high we wouldn't enter on the first rejection or the second rejection as you can see with that red line but you can tell that we have a double top here because price isn't able to make a new high on decent volume but so the next thing you'll see is that price sells a little bit on the first level when we made a lower high and then it breaks support and then it tries to retrace a little bit on the second level but then you'll notice that Price sold off with large increase in volume. And then now we can say that the lower highs and the lower lows are forming and are, they're confirmed after price formed a double top pattern. So now we'd be looking for a short opportunity here. And where would that short opportunity be? It would be towards the high or the open of that first big red candle where the arrow is pointing to the, the high, pointing to the increase in volume. So you'd wanna put a stop above there or at least the first oval high to give yourself some room. And notice how the next candle that came in formed an inverted hammer. And we came down to support and we broke that support on heavy volume. And it came right back to the low of the day where you take your profit target. Lastly, before we move to candlestick patterns, let's talk about how to read and align multiple time frames. So this is typically what I have. Sometimes I have instead of four hour, I'll have the daily candle. And what I'll do is I'll take what I find on, let's say the four hour chart and I'll map my lines and I'll consider that to be my long-term structure. I'll identify major trend lines and support and resistance here first. And then my intermediate term, I use 30 minute candlesticks and I'll map that overlay those price levels onto the 30 minute and see if they align with any Fibonacci levels that I have, the pivots, um, the S1s or R1s, you'll learn more about what those are. So we can identify critical trade day trading levels. And then lastly, I'll overlay all the price levels onto the short term time frame to identify entries and exits for day trading. And the last step is really crucial. Like when you overlay the long term intermediate term onto the short term chart, then once all you have to do now is just wait for price to get to those areas and then wait for the signal to enter long or short, depending on what your strategy is, and then execute your trade.